So VEX has officially banned Australian academies from competing in RECF events. Now a lot of you have been reaching out to me either privately or commenting on my videos asking what Creator Academy's plans were. Are we going to close up shop now that we can't run any VEX teams? And what kind of loopholes are we jumping through? Well, I decided to make this video to address some of these questions because there have been so many rumors about why the ban happened and who was to blame. So as Australia's biggest VEX tutorial channel, I think it is best that I try to clarify a few things. And this is a bit of a long video because I love VEX and I really wanted to set the record straight because my academy and a lot of other academies are just interested in teaching kids. It is really unfortunate that this ban has put us in a negative light. As many of you know, I am or was a VEX event partner. I've hosted five tournaments in Sydney and I've run dozens of teams under my robotics academy. But a lot of you probably didn't realize that when I joined VEX in 2022, there was already a huge problem with the Australian VEX community. In particular, the region that was uh, seeing the most issues was New South Wales, which saw the most complaints around G1 and G2 violations. And I know this because the regional support manager and I worked very hard to clean up some of these problems. I don't want to talk about specific events or accusations, but in general, New South Wales had some toxicity issues, where some of the teams were focused more on winning than teaching students about STEM. And this was not a problem specifically directed to academies but academies tended to top most of the rankings at the time. In 2023, for example, only 20% of Aussie teams were academies, but they comprised 80% of the teams that went to world championships. And further to that, VEX already had a huge problem with cloned robots. That is, that teams eagerly copied each other's robots in a way that simply was not seen in other competitions. Take First Lego League, FTC, or FRC, for example. Seeing clones of robots in these competitions is super rare, and the problem is specific to VEX, and it comes from three main factors. Firstly, VEX has a low diversity of parts, and they restrict you to build using only VEX parts, and this means that robots are really easy to copy. Secondly, VEX competitions place a huge emphasis on winning tournament champions or skills, both of which require an excellent robot, which drives people to seek the best designs, even if it means um, copying someone else. And finally, there are companies from certain countries exploiting this by having professional engineers develop solutions to the VEX games every season and either sell the designs or in some cases, entire robots to desperate students. So part of my work with the RSM was to identify where robot designs were coming from, who was buying them and how to deal with it. Because so many teams use these designs, you might be tempted to put a whole region or a whole country to blame, but in reality, there are only two or three suppliers of these designs. And when I became event partner, I made it a personal mission to fix the Australian VEX competition. How did I do that? Well, I tried to fight for teams to stop receiving awards in multiple tournaments, just like other competitions. That way, more teams get some time in the spotlight. I tried to set up a design library for RECF to keep track of cloned designs. I introduced more schools to the VEX competition, and one of them, James Roos Agricultural High, sent multiple teams to Worlds after being coached by their own staff. And four more schools in New South Wales are starting brand new VEX teams this season after extensive professional development. And of course, I spent thousands of my own money thousands of dollars running fair competitions in my region. I tried to use my position as an event partner and academy owner to help improve the Australian VEX landscape. In the end, the straw that broke the camel's back was the 2024 season, when multiple teams travelled to Australia from overseas to set up private teams in the hope of winning a little bit easier in Australia than in other countries. It was so hard for VEX to prove and screen which students were coming in from overseas and which ones were local that the only logical solution was to ensure that every team was registered with an Australian school. 
And that's it. That's how the Academy ban happened. Now, I respect the REC Foundation's decision. I'm sure it was a tough call to make. And people asking if I had any loopholes, I don't. I'm still teaching VEX in schools, I just don't run any teams. And what about my academy? Will I have to close down? Well, you might be surprised to know that running teams for VEX is only a tiny fraction of my business. And in fact, out of the 20 or so teams that I've run over the last few years, only four have gone to Worlds. So our goal has always been the education journey. And thankfully, all of our students who want to continue with VEX can continue doing so at their own school. And for others, there's still many great robotics competitions to participate in, like First Lego League, First Tech Challenge, Robo Cup, and so forth. If you made it to the end of this video, then we're practically family. Uh, make sure that you like the video and subscribe for more robotics tutorials. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.